Hello and welcome to this week's video uh, this week. Just checking out an area that I've driven past several times on my way to different locations. Um, quite, lo quite local to me, to be honest. Over at St. Audrey's and I've come into the Deer Park Forest. Um, so, a bit of woodland photography this week. Uh, to get out and get some fresh air. Not feeling too great this week, so I just want to get out and get some fresh air and have a walk around. So yeah, I don't know what we've got here, what it's got to offer. Never been here before. So, I'll um, take a look. Any of you local photographers that haven't been here, been a bit of an insight for you as well. Um, but also a bit of an exploration for me. So, let's walk on up and see what the deer park has to offer so it's a bit of a dull and gray day um not a lot to offer light wise so um probably more of a scouting expedition than one that's going to provide some fantastic images but um even so at least we're out and checking out different areas Okay, so one of the purposes of this video this week is I quite often talk about um, how I expose a blend different areas. Um, so I'm not going to get into the, um, the post-processing blend inside at the moment. All I want to do is discuss exposure and nailing the exposure that you want, getting the correct exposure for the areas you want and using your camera and the information on the camera, uh, the different metering modes and your histogram. So that's just something I want to try and talk about during the course of this trip. Okay, so I'm just uh, framing up. There's a old twisted beech tree here that's uh, caught my eye as I'm walking around. Um, so I've framed up this shot now. I've, I've walked around the area with the camera, just handheld, um, because I was struggling to get a, a composition that I was happy with. So I've literally done a 360 right the way around and um, finally settled with uh, this position here. So uh, let me show you, show you the composition that I've gone for. Okay, so there in camera, let me just take the um, exposure so you can see it, okay. Um, so what we've got is I've used this, um, this log here in the foreground. So I've used this log here in the foreground which is sort of almost pointing you towards this tree here. And then this tree here is also in the frame and this tree here is just on the edge of the frame, just sort of holding this, this side together here with this log pointing towards that tree there in the, in the left-hand third. So um, got some, you know, sort of fallen leaves on the floor, which is giving us a bit of a, Bit of a contrast color as well as so i've been uh, taking a couple of exposures as i said um exposing for the tree and uh, we've got some sort of light up in the sky which is quite bright so i don't want that to blow out but obviously then you expose for the the um the sky and then the everything else becomes a bit dark so i'm just sort of doing some different exposures 
to uh, get an uh, exposure I'm happy with, um, which I will talk you more through in a bit. Another scene I'm not overly happy with, but um, but because I spotted it, like I always say, just take it because you may get it back, get it on the bigger screen, and think, "Wow, glad I took it." But anyway, um, what we've got, let me turn you around. Got this bit of a bit of a pool here, and then in the background, and these spindly silver birch trees just standing out from that dark background so yeah just getting the shot okay so let me take you through the different metering options um, obviously every camera is slightly different but um, this is on the Z7 II what we've got there is metering modes uh, this one has got a highlight weighted metering um, but what I use most of the time is spot metering which I'll explain why in a second uh, center weighted metering and matrix met metering so I'll explain to you why I use spot metering um, if I select matrix metering a second uh, on this side here is my exposure meter you see as I alter the shutter speed um, or the f-stop it uh, it just changes goes up and down in the center there is what it classes as uh, perfect exposure so this is on the matrix metering so what it's doing is taking an average of the whole whole area and it's setting it at that point there so if I then go into center weighting metering uh, so now we're in center weighting metering um, my focus point is in the center and it is exposure is still the same because it's saying it's slightly brighter in the middle so I've just had to take up to get that exposure into that correct exposure point there but if I move the as with the matrix if I move my focus point around you'll see that I'm just get it exposure that you can see okay on the camera if I move my focus point around you'll see that that metering though doesn't really change if I then go into spot metering selected spot metering you will see why I use spot metering okay so now I'm in spot metering I've just moved the camera around slightly just to um, just to show you what I'm doing now in spot metering so I've got my focus point there right in the center if I just move it you'll be able to be able to see it and um, so there's my focus point so if I move to darker areas you see that the exposure meter to the side there just drops and also then because I've moved the camera around so I can show you the sky if I move to the sky you can see that the exposure meter has now gone way overexposed so by doing spot metering you can check that each area of your photo of your image is correctly exposed so the sky there 
I can take that down to make sure I'm not overexposed. So then I can take a shot for the sky and then in the darker areas I can bring the exposure up to make sure I've got plenty of information in that area as well as and then I can blend them together in post-processing. I will show you the histogram in a sec and then that will um, show you a bit more information regarding getting correct exposures. So that's why I always use spot spot metering, um, particularly for landscape photography, uh, so that I can check each area and make sure that I'm happy with the exposure. Um, on the matrix exposure and the center weighted exposure, um, it it takes a an average of a, a bigger area, so. Therefore, uh, you could have highlighted areas that are blown out or um, dark areas that um, are, are a bit dark as well as. Highlighted areas are the problem. Um, if, you, if you've got a highlighted area that the, it's overexposed and it's blown out, that information is gone. Um, you're never gonna pull that back. Sometimes darker areas you can pull them back a little bit in post-processing, but with a highlighted area, if it's blown out, that is it. You're never gonna get that information back. So it always pays to, uh, to get a, a decent exposure on the brightest, brightest point of your image so that you know that that isn't gonna blow out. And I can say, you can always, Play around in post-processing and bring up the areas that you need that you need to change okay so i'm gonna walk on around now um find another composition and then i'll pull up the histogram and try to explain a histogram and how a great tool that is to check your exposure of your overall image Okay, so this scene down through here, <coughs> the tree there, off in the distance there, and it's standing out, <coughs> silver birch tree, again, standing out from the, the greens. So the, the pathways I've followed around, one goes across the end of there, and I've come up, and each way I've come, I've seen that tree, <coughs> and it's just standing out to me. I thought I need to get some sort of a shot of it. So anyway, I've chosen this composition here, looking down through this trackway um we've got a bit of color in the color in these gorse bushes on the sides as well um the fence there is a little bit distracting uh hopefully i can just take that down a little bit in post-processing um and i also felt like something was missing as a as a bit of a foreground interest as well so i've been playing around so in the final image that i choose you will see what i've been doing to uh, to give myself a little bit of a foreground interest okay so we try and explain the histogram slightly the histogram is picking up the dynamic range in the whole scene so this is picking up this is your light dynamic range in the whole of that image. If I take the exposure down, the histogram moves to the left, which is the darker side. And if I take the exposure up, 
everything obviously moves to the right which is brings everything up is on the light side what you don't want to do is have particularly i said about the highlights the highlight side clipping out because that information is gone a histogram that is in the center like that is giving you a nice dynamic range plenty of information that you can pull out in post-processing of all different exposures but i'll just to show you something if i tip tilt the camera up so we're picking up the sky so don't be caught out by your histogram my histogram now i'm sh shooting the same scene but i've tilted it down the histogram has altered slightly and not so much information because the peaks have dropped if i take this exposure down the peaks we're starting now to pick up more dynamic range across the scene so the peaks are getting higher and there's your highlights which were off the chart which were clipping out so those highlights in that sky over there you've lost all information in that in no sky so you would need to bring that exposure back to keep that highlight side in the histogram and then you will have some detail in that sky and you've also still got some detail in the, in the shadows and the darks so i've tilted the camera back down as you can see now the histogram let me just tilt the screen slightly so it's not glaring so much um histogram now you can see we've got nice high peaks which means we've got plenty of dynamic range um nothing is clipping out either side if i take the exposure right down there's nothing to the highlight side and if i take the exposure right up then the darks are there as well so bringing that back in the center there that is my exposure and plenty of information for when you get your image back into the editing suite for post-processing. So hopefully I haven't uh, babbled on too much and talked a load of garbage to you. Um, hopefully you've got something out of that if um, to get a bit of an understanding as to the uh, different different modes of exposure and using that histogram to make sure that you've got a nice dynamic range in your image that you can then pull out information when you uh, when you get your image back into Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever other editing software you use so hopefully that has been of some use okay so i'm not sure if this is going to work <clears throat> just grabbing this shot as i go by really i've got this silver birch tree here but it's sort of backed and surrounded by these um, conifers these pine trees so it's sort of standing out the contrast of the the lightness of the beech tree the silver birch tree uh, backed by those the green the dark greens so um, so yeah just getting the shot whilst I'm passing um, if it if it works if it works then I'll uh, put it up let you have a look making my way back down around the bottom pathways now um, so a little bit disappointing regarding photography wise I don't think I've got anything this morning that's gonna light up the light the fire so to speak it's uh, yeah nothing spectacular um, but hopefully 
hopefully sort of going through the exposure modes and everything has, has been a bit of help to people thanks for joining me this morning and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the video if you have please hit the subscription button and the notification bell to keep up with all my latest content and give the video a thumbs up it's always appreciated because it does help with the YouTube and how the video gets shared also drop me a comment down below as always it's great to get some feedback I do get some um, regular comments from regular regular subscribers which is much appreciated so um, for this week hope you've enjoyed it around Deer Park here at St Audrey's we'll make way back now so until next time take it easy mm -hmm.